Hey everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with JediInsider.com, your number one news source for everything Star Wars. And for today, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Star Wars Rogue One 3 and 3 quarter inch Jedi Revolt 4 pack from Hasbro. Now, this four pack contains figures of two tubes, Jin Erso, an Imperial hover tank driver, and exclusive to this set, Saul Guerrero. Now, first of all, a big thanks to the folks at Hasbro for sending this set out to me so I could review it. This is at this time the only way to get a Saul Guerrero figure. I'm kind of surprised we haven't actually gotten a six inch version of Saul, being that, you know, he's played by Forrest Whitaker in the movie, and it was kind of a big deal when it was announced that he was going to be in the movie. He doesn't have a super huge part in the, in the film. I mean, he's not in it that much, but again, I'm kind of surprised we haven't gotten more versions of, of him in figure form. But as it is, if you want to get him in uh, at least the scale, this is the only way to get him at this time. Now, the figures come packaged in a window box. Up in the top corner, you've got the Star Wars Rogue One logo. Down in the bottom left corner, you've got some artwork for each of the characters. And then in the right corner, you've got the name of the set. On, on the sides, you've got more artwork. And then on the back of the packaging, you have bios for each of the characters in multiple languages. All right, let's get this open and take a look at the figures inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside the packaging along with their other contents. Now, each figure in this set comes with at least one accessory. Saul actually comes with two, and if you count Jen Urso's hood, I guess she comes with two as well. And then two tubes in the tank driver come with blasters. For the tank driver, you get this Imperial rifle, and I like the paint applications on this. You've got that kind of gun gray with some scratch marks and stuff, so it looks like it's metal. So I think they've done actually a pretty good job, and the sculpting detail is pretty good on it as well. And he can hold it in either hand, in the left or the right. He does not have any kind of holster or anything for the weapon. Now the figure itself is, is pretty basic. It's just white with black, which is how it looks, you know, he looked in the movie. Unfortunately, there's no hover tank that Hasbro's released in any scale up to this point. And I kind of doubt that they're going to, since they haven't already. But... It is cool that we get the figure. Now, I'm pretty sure this figure was released on regular card. All the figures, except for Saul, have been released previously. And Saul's the only one that, that is unique to this set. And we kind of saw the same thing last year with Hasbro when they released that four-pack with the Maz figure for Force Awakens. But as it is, you got pretty good sculpting detail. Looks pretty true to the armor that you see the, the driver wearing in the movie. He's got the little backpack and everything and the Stormtrooper belt. Only five points of articulation, so you can turn the head to the left and the right. And you can actually kind of tilt the head to the left and right with this one. And he's got a little up and down movement as well. Arms, you've just got the rotation there at the shoulder. No elbow joints or anything. No midsection articulation. You can do the legs forward and back. These little pouches are done with a, a rubber material, so they are flexible. So it doesn't really limit the leg movement. No knee articulation, unfortunately, and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Two tubes. I like the detailing on this figure. He was basically Saul's right-hand man in the movie. He comes with this large rifle. Now, he doesn't really hold the rifle as, as an actual rifle very well. The, the hole, the grip for the rifle is, is not very suited for the hand. You can kind of get it in there a little bit in the right hand. But again, he doesn't hold it the greatest. You can just kind of have him hold it like... You know, he's having it to his side. I don't actually really recall him using the rifle in the movie, just see him carrying it around. Maybe in the scene where they attack the, the Imperials with the tank and everything, maybe he was using the rifle, I don't remember. But I do like the paint applications on this figure. I like the different colors on his, on his uniform or his outfit that he wears, and it's done with some various uh, browns and, and beige colors. So I think that looks pretty good. He's got the hoses, the two tubes, where, where, which is where he gets his name from, that connect from um, his belt to his uh, breathing apparatus. And I think the head sculpt is pretty good. And then he's got another tube that connects to the uh, controls, his oxygen breather on his chest there. And that appears to be a separate piece that's just uh, glued onto the figure. And the skirt piece is actually solid plastic. It's not just vinyl. So that allows you to do the legs, split the legs across. Um, again, you've only got the five points of articulation. You can turn the head. Now, you do want to be careful not to turn the head too much or you'd pull those tubes, but he still has pretty good movement. And again, you can kind of tilt the head, pivot it to the left and the right. Arms attached with uh, just a standard uh, rotation joint. 
Um, no elbow articulation, no wrist articulation, no midsection articulation. You can do the legs forward and you can do them back on this one. No knee articulation, no ankle articulation, and two, two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. For Jen Urso, we've seen this figure released several times in the line, so nothing too different here. She's got the hood piece, which you can remove. It's done with just a vinyl material. The head sculpt, it's okay, but definitely doesn't really look much like the actress. Not that I really expect the scale of a figure to do so, especially you know for a, for a line geared more towards kids. I do like the sculpting with the hair. The hair's just done with a brown color. I do have a little bit of a paint blemish where you can see it looks like some of the skin tone is rubbed off on the hair. I would say the skin tone is a little bit pale on this figure. But otherwise, I like the overall look of the sculpt. I like the jacket. You've got the base stripe down the arms, and you've got the texturing on the back, which I think looks good. She comes with her blaster, and that's done with a metallic silver, and she's got a working gun holster, so I like that. And she's just got the dark pants with the brown boots. Five points of articulation, so like with the others, you can turn the head to the left and the right. This one really has no up or down movement or pivot to the left or right. Arms, you can just rotate. No elbow joints, no wrist articulation, no midsection articulation, and then the legs you can do forward and back. No knee articulation, no ankle articulation, and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. And then finally we have Saul Guerrera, and I think this is actually a pretty nice looking figure. The face sculpt's not 100% to Forrest Whitaker, but I don't think it's too bad, again, especially for this scale of figure uh, for a kid's line. I do like the sculpting of the hair, and you've got some lighter colors mixed in. The eyes are a little bit off. I think that's what throws the face sculpt off the most is the eyes. But again, for this scale of figure and everything, I don't think it's too bad. And then I like the sculpting detail on the suit. I think they've done a good job of capturing that. He's got the breathing apparatus that you see him use in the movie. Now, it's not usable. He can't actually pull it up to his mouth or anything. But it is done with a separate piece. And you've got the little hose that connects to the oxygen tank on the side of his belt. And he's got this little cape on the back, which is done with a vinyl material, and it's done with a beige and brown color. He's got his walking stick that you see him use in the movie. He comes with that, and he can hold it in either his left or his right hand. And then he also comes with a blaster. You don't actually see him use a weapon in the movie, but he does come with one. So I don't know how accurate it is since you never really see him use it. But it does have the working gun holster, and it fits in there nice and tight. And then he's got just the green suit, and he's got this little silver circle, which you see in the movie, and he's got this big collar and shoulder pad that sticks up. Again, pretty movie accurate, done with the dark green and the lighter grayish green. And then he's got the, uh, for the right foot, it's basically a robot leg. I guess he lost his leg in one of his great battles. And then the, the left foot is more human. You do have the little metal piece, and he's just wearing a sandal. But this seems to be pretty movie accurate to when you see him first walk in in, in that scene in Rogue One. Now, it'll be interesting to see if Hasbro gets around to releasing a younger version. You know, we do see a younger version at the beginning of the movie. And then also in the Rebels cartoon, we see a, a young version of Saul Guerrero. So I would expect that eventually we might see a, a, a release of Saul in the Rebels line. So the scale between these four figures seems to be pretty good. The hover tank driver and Saul Guerrero are about the same height, and they're the tallest in the set. Two Tubes is the next tallest, and then Jen Urso is the smallest. Now, I don't really know how tall the, the tank driver was since he never really got out of the tank until it, you know, he got shot sitting in the tank. But he stands about four inches tall. Same with Saul. Uh, two Tubes stands closer to three and three-quarter inches, and then Jen Urso stands a little bit under three and three-quarter inches. Okay, so that's my review. So overall, I like this set. I think all four figures look pretty good, but I definitely like the Saul Guerrero figure, which is exclusive to this box set. I think they've done a good job with the sculpting detail of the suit and everything. The face sculpt's not 100% to Forrest Whitaker, but I don't really expect that with a line like this geared for kids. And again, I think they've done a nice job with it. If you want to get Saul Guerrero right now, this is the only way to do it. This box set is starting to hit shelves now. We'll have a full image gallery up at JediInsider.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, if you haven't already, please follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I'll have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, I'll catch you later.